We are back. Road to the Derby. Andrew Capone, who's got the action. Caleb Knight taking a stand. Uh, Caleb, last week, Louisiana Derby, Epicenter. We're getting hate on Twitter, uh, comments on YouTube. People are, are calling us chalk eaters. What would you think of the race and how it turned out? <laughs> yeah, Andrew, I thought it was pretty formful. Epicenter was never the sexiest pick that race, but he did appear to be really a cut above that field, and, and he proved it on Saturday. I did think it was interesting that he showed a new dimension where he rated off the pace that day. We've only ever seen him really be somewhat of a one-dimensional runner and need the lead type. Uh, I think they used this race as an opportunity to teach him how to rate and to prove to them that he doesn't really need the lead, considering he didn't really need the points in that race as he's already secured himself a spot in the Derby gate. So I thought that was great to see him learn to set off the pace and show that he's not a horse that necessarily needs the lead. And he looked really good in doing it. It was very impressive and not the biggest mutuals we've ever seen, but uh, he looked very impressive. And I'll be really interested to see how he stacks up come the first Saturday in May. Yeah, I thought it was great. I was, it was a nice win. I really liked, you know, when he got to that top of the stretch and you saw him veer out a little bit, get with, and you know there was just so much horse there and the confidence to really ride it out. So it was impressive. Um, won't be my derby horse, I can guarantee you that, but uh, definitely an impressive win nonetheless. <laughs> So this week, we're down in beautiful Hallandale Beach, Florida. We have the Florida Derby, grade one, 100 points available, going one and one-eighth of a mile on that Gulfstream Park dirt. Um, nice field here. I thought of all the Derby prep races this week, and it came out the best. Um, so I'll start us off with the, the one horse, Strike Hard. Um, Strike Hard, it seems like a horse that they're grasping for straws here. Horse does have one point. Maybe they're trying to get a little backdoor here. Horse just seems too slow, outclassed, and the weather will not help that rail position there. Um, we're expecting quite a bit of rain in Florida this weekend, so it's going to be quite wet. I'm interested to see if, there, if we get a different type of setup in this race than it's necessarily projected on pace if, we, if it's too wet and nobody wants kickback in their face. But Strike Hard with Junior up 20 to 1, just not going to do it for me. Um, I think the horse is just not in the same level here. What did you think of the two? horse and the three horse classic causeway and you know my pick simplification yeah i know you've been on simplification for a while but starting with classic causeway so these two runners are interesting in this spot because i don't think either of these runners really need the points to make the gate so that's always something to i keep in the back of my mind when i'm evaluating it is how cranked are these runners going to be and i think that applies doubly so for a horse like classic causeway who is already relatively experienced with five starts under his belt now uh, he already has the points to get in. So he's looked visually very impressive while beating up on some horses over in Tampa Bay and the Sam F. Davis and the Tampa Bay Derby. Figure makers have not really loved a lot of those efforts. The figs have come back just okay. Uh, not enough to make him a standout. Uh, it's, I don't think it's encouraging to see Brian Lynch give him one more race here. I would not have liked to see this horse in the Derby just off that last Tampa Bay Derby effort. But I think he does fit in here. I think he's a player. He's certainly going to be a player on the front end. He has one of the quickest first or second steps out of the gate that I've seen this year. Irad has done just an incredible job of getting this horse out of the gate swiftly and securing that position on the lead. I'm sure that's probably the game plan today is to get out front and see how far you can take him. So I think he's a major player, but probably not one that I'd want to back at too short of a price. The number three simplification is another who's likely done enough to secure a spot in the Kentucky Derby in May. Uh, this is a horse that I know is near and dear to your heart. And he's really done everything that's been asked of him. Uh, ever since getting stretched out to two turns, he's been a completely different horse. He's looked extremely impressive in both the Holy Bull and the Fountain of Youth. I mean, arguably was best in that Holy Bull effort two back where he totally blew the start with his head turned, you know, circled the field and got up for second. And it is interesting to see that they've taken more of a stocking closing kind of approach with him in his last two starts where he's done most of his running on or near the lead earlier in his career. But I do think this horse makes a ton of sense here. He is a deserving favorite and has really looked good. Uh, clearly likes Gulfstream and should the track come up sloppy, he's certainly bred to handle that as well. I think that takes us to the number four, King of Truth. So any thoughts there, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I think King of Truth is a great turf horse. Too bad this race is not on turf. So I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, horses ran pretty well over the Tapita. So, you know, I do like to see good synth to slop form. So if it does get sloppy, there might be a chance here. Um, rain is the only thing that I really see this horse really giving an opportunity here. I will say, though, I am going to use this horse probably in third in a lot of my trifectas. It's going to be a massive, massive price. Um, and I, I think there's an opportunity here, especially if we get super sloppy, uh, there's an opportunity for this horse to really shine and show its ability. It's a little bit of diversity. 
Brings me to the five, Papa Cap. Uh, this Gunrunner baby, I mean, we've, we've talked about this horse over and over again and, and how lost people have been on it. Uh, ran a nice bullet workout this past week, 47 and a hook, with a strong workmate who, who's, who's really is showing improving. Horse was empty in the Risen Star, really showed nothing to me. Um, a few bridesmaids when jo Bravo's up, too bad he's not here for the mount. Um, I never like to bet deteriorating form, in my opinion, in a grade one. Um, I think this is a horse that you're going to see take some action, especially with the two interviews that Cassie gave, that the horse is ready to go and, and this is going to be a big race. I don't necessarily like to buy pay, play horses with deteriorating form in a grade one. So this is going to be a horse I'm, I'm probably going to leave off my tickets. The works are good, but what I'm really going to hope for here is that other people don't leave this off their tickets. This is what I like to call a pool filler. I hope we get some opportunity to uh, get some diversion in the odds. And, and that 10 to 1 morning line, I, I don't think sticks. I think it goes a little bit shorter. Um, so that brings us to the six, Charge It. What do you think there? Yeah, Charge It was an interesting horse in here, considering he, he's looked really good on paper. But you have to wonder a little bit as to what he's been running against in these maiden races. This is a big step up for a horse like this who's going from maiden special weight company straight into a grade one uh, on his third career start and he's tackling two turns for the first time it is todd pletcher and he's having as always an incredible Gulfstream park meet louis Saez gets up who's always one of the hottest riders probably not much uh, doubt as far as what the game plan with target's going to be which is going to be essentially get out there and try to make the lead and take him as far as he can this horse has never Pass him their horse. He's never been headed in his entire two race career. So can't imagine they're going to try something new in a grade one and pretty much the last chance this horse will have to get a spot in the Derby gate. I'm not going to back this horse. I think seven to two is way too short for me to go to a horse that is, is making this kind of a step up in class. Got a really soft pace last time out at Gulfstream and drew off and was, was much the best. You beat that field the way a good horse should at odds of one to five. But I think there's just a lot of things that are up against a lightly raced cult like this. So for me, not one I'm going to bet. Uh, likely has to deal with Classic Coswood on the lead. Uh, or even a horse like White Abario might try to contest as well. So not one I'm super interested in, um, especially at a short price. Speaking of White Abario, that's the number seven horse. I am interested in White Abario here. This was a horse that I think uh, you and I both liked. And you actually tipped as your long shot for the uh, Holy Bull that we covered about two months ago. And this is a horse that has looked really good, uh, is coming into this race somewhat light on experience, but is a perfect three for three over Gulfstream. So, you know, this horse loves the track, uh, got a really nice trip in that Holy Bull in a race where simplification didn't get the best trip, but White Barrio still won that race by four lengths and change. So take nothing away from him in that effort. That was also coming off of a bit of a layoff of about three months, two and a half, three months there. So I think you know, you're getting also some of the hottest connections in Florida right now with uh, Safi Joseph and Tyler Gaffleone. I think this horse makes a ton of sense. He can sit just off the pace, doesn't really need the lead, but should be forwardly placed. And I don't think he's going to mind any rain whatsoever. So I think White Barrio is a big player in this field. It takes us to number eight, Cajun, Mag Cajun Magic. Yeah, I mean, Cajun Magic, I saw this horse live at the Holy Bull. Um, I think that the horse is a good sprinter and maybe a seven furlong specialist, but the the length the, the, that race definitely showed. Um, horse wasn't ready. I think Yates is reaching here. Horse is coming off quite a bit of a layoff here, similar to, the, the, to its mate right down to the inside. Um, I don't necessarily think that this horse is ready. 56 days off. The works have shown me absolutely nothing. There hasn't been any improvement. Um, and, you know, it's already lost to White Barrio simplification. Um, two contenders in this field. So definitely a horse I'm going to leave off my tickets. I think it's not going to take much money. I think that 30 to 1 is very generous. Um, I think we're going to see a, a love, much higher number there. Um, this is a horse that probably needs to stay in protected stakes company. Um, and this is just too much of an ask right here. Brings you to the 9 0 captain. Um, interesting horse here. Uh, uh, you know, 10 derby points. Um, the horse is very, very hard. I mean, I like to call these hard horses. They they really just show what they've done. Lightly raced. Um, we, we have a little bit of a change here. Um, you know, uh, JJ. Steps off. Joel takes the mount. You know, for Joel Rosario to take a twenty to one mount in a race like this, I think there might be an opportunity here. Found the youth, finished um, finished third, ran a really really nice race there. Uh, the 
I believe that part of that finishing third had to do with the, the falling horse in front of it that, that gave the opportunity to get there. But the horse has some points, and there's an opportunity to pick one, pick some up here. I'm never going to fade Joel Rosario in a race like this. Um, I think this horse is a must-use in your verticals, and there's an opportunity for it to come in at, at a really big price. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be my top pick, but O'Captain will definitely be on my trifecta tickets. So uh, why don't you round out the fields for us here with the 10 and 11, Clapton and Steel Sunshine. Yeah, sure. I absolutely agree with our captain. That's uh, that just feels like one of those Rosario horses that's going to come in underneath at a huge price. So I'm with you there. Bringing to number 10, Clapton. This is a horse that I have a hard time making an argument for. He's moving way up in class, you know, sprinting against Florida Bread Allowance Company into a, a grade one mile and an eighth a distance that this horse doesn't seem to really want for connections that haven't had much success at this level. So could be a pace factor stretching out, but it's going to be disadvantaged from the far outside post to be sure. Uh, this is a horse that I think would be surprised if he could really even hit the board. So not one will make my tickets, but you'll certainly get paid to go there if that's a horse that you find compelling to use. The number 11, Steel Sunshine, another uh, pretty big outsider in this field. Again, not a horse that I have a strong opinion for. I probably would look to him a little bit more than I would the previous horse Clapton, but again, not a horse that I think has much of a chance in here. He did run a pretty good race at this distance last time out in that optional claiming $75,000 race on March 2nd. The spacing of the races and the workouts do appear promising. So there, there is some reason to have some optimism there. My big concern here is just that that last race, I think he really got a perfect setup that day where the pace was extremely swift he got to close into it and was still a, a pretty distant uh, second place finish there. Couldn't get the job done even with the pace setup. So I'm not sure that even with a good pace setup to run at here, he's going to make a ton of sense. But he's one that at a monster price, I could see maybe hitting the board or running underneath if you want to key him in the bottom of your trifecta or your super. Well, that's our great field of 11. I'm very excited for this race. As, as I said before, I think it's the best derby prep race for this weekend. Uh, when we're looking at top picks, my top pick here, you know what it's going to be. I've been on the horse since January. It's going to be simplification. Horse just can win from anywhere. Um, and, and that's the type of horse I want to be in this race, especially if it gets sloppy. I think this horse really has the breeding underneath, and it's, and it's made to be able to run in that that um that slot, the wet, uh, miss the breaks, miss that, take away that miss break. I think it has a really good opportunity for winning the Holy bull as well. Um, fountain of youth showed the ability accident in front of it was still going to win matter what, but came from the outside. Um, figs continue to improve race after race, after race pace position and post a uh, pace setup and post position are perfect here. Um, just what Santa wants. In my opinion, I think that there's going to be some cheap speed or, or as inexpensive velocity as some might call it, uh, that are going to go out in this race. And, and, and I think this horse has an opportunity to stalk and, and really just show what it is. It doesn't necessarily need the points. It's in the Derby gate. Um, this is my Florida Derby pick. And most likely this is going to be my Kentucky Derby pick as well, as long as they can get it done on this following Saturday. Uh, would you have your, who did you have as your top pick? Yeah, so I definitely took a long, hard look at simplification. That horse will be on all my tickets. I decided to go for the number seven, White Abario, the horse that beat simplification last out. Uh, I totally agree with you as far as simplification did have a tough trip that day. And he may have been best, but I also think White Abario ran an outstanding race that day. He, he does have the versatility to where he doesn't need the lead. He can set off the pace. He can be right on the lead if he happens to inherit it that way. And the horse loves Gulfstream. It's three for three over this course. Uh, with the only loss coming at Churchill and the Kentucky Jockey Club, which has been a very productive race. I think he'll be a little more sharp after that, uh, set, getting that start in February off that sh short layoff. I think he's going to get a nice stocking trip from a moderate to outside post here. And I think he just makes a lot of sense in this field. I'm not totally convinced about uh, some of the other speed types like Charge It or even Classic Causeway, perhaps. Uh, and I think White Abario really just makes a lot of sense here to stock the pace and it'll be uh, tough to catch if he's anywhere near the lead turner for home. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, that would be my second top pick if I had to, but uh, I'm only giving out one top pick and then my, my long shot here. And it's not necessarily a long shot play, but I'm definitely going to be using, make playing a, a pretty big exact with simplification on top. Um, it's going to be O Captain. Uh, this is such a Joel horse. I, I can, there's nothing more I can say. I think the horse 
stays a little closer. I think Joel keeps the horse a little closer. It makes that one big run, and, and there's an opportunity here. I, I just think this is a horse. Don't overlook this horse at 20 to 1. Um, I don't think you'll get that. I think you'll get probably 10, 10 to 14, some 10 to 12, somewhere in that range, probably cut in half. But uh, definitely do not leave this horse off some of your tickets because there's an opportunity for it to come in at, at, at a very big price. Uh, did you have a long shot for this race? I did, yeah. I love your pick of O Captain. Uh, I decided to go a different direction to a horse that uh, you spoke a little bit about, which is the number one strike hard. I think I've actually tipped this horse once before as a long shot. And uh, I'm going back to the well one more time here because I think you'll get paid enough to give this horse another chance. I think strike hard is somewhat proven that he may just not be as good as a few of the other contenders in here, like Simplification or White of Barrio. But I look back and the big question I had with him was whether or not he can get the distance. And I thought that he proved he absolutely can in that Sam F. Davis. Uh, for those who watched the Sam F. Davis or Tampa Bay Derby uh, preview show that we did, we talked a little bit about how brutal it is to win from the outside post at Tampa Bay when going two turns on the dirt. Uh, it was something like 3% from mm -hmm. the far outside post for Tampa Bay dirt routes. This horse broke from the 10 post. He came out dead last. He sat five wide around the entire field. And that was a day where the speed never really came back. I mean, Classic Causeway took the field gate to wire. Uh, nobody did any serious, serious closing that day. So I thought he ran an excellent race, given the post position and the pace, the way that it was set up up front. Uh, I like the fact that they came to Gulfstream instead here. To me, that speaks to that the connections have some confidence to skip the Tampa races and come straight to the Florida Derby. And I think that he's run well enough to prove that he deserves to be in the conversation. I mean, he may be about four lengths worse than some of the other horses in here that are going to take all the money, but you'll probably get you know, four to five times the price. So I'll give Strike Hard one more chance getting uh, back to Gulfstream here where he's had the most success and with a better post draw today, I think he has a shot. One more time. It only takes one. You always got to give him that one more time and you're definitely going to get paid if this horse comes in. Well, we have a, a phenomenal field here of 11 for the Florida Derby, grade one, 100 points available this Saturday. Race number 14, they have quite a card there. I feel like the first race, I think it's like 11 in the morning or something like that. So you have an opportunity to bet all day if you're looking for it. Um, great race there, one and one-eighth a mile. We ask you to like and subscribe to the video down below so you get all of our Road to the Derby picks. We will be back this week with two more videos. Thank you for watching.